recording, so six o'clock comes, you can okay. get us started. It's six o'clock, but I'll wait for Dr. Meyer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and gavel us in, call the meeting to order. Uh, our first uh, action is to rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. We'll start by reading the <coughs> district mission statement. Uh, Trustee Majors, would you like to read that? Yeah. Thank you. Lakeland Joint School District's daily mission is to maximize student learning and ensure every student is growing academically, social, emotionally, and behaviorally all day, or excuse me, every day in all environments. Thank you. Now we'll move on to patron input. Uh, Chrissy and Chelsea, did we receive any patron input this week? We did not. Okay. Moving on to action items. Um, we have the consent agenda and the meetings from the previous minutes, or the minutes from the previous meeting, and HR items um, for the consent agenda. We can either approve them individually or as a block. Does anyone have any discussion on either item, either items, either of the items? I do not. Um, I do on the minutes. I would like to note a correction on the fourth page under board member input for future agenda items. Uh, the statement on the third sentence, well, the second sentence is Dr. Meyer suggested a new hour board workshop for the next board meeting. She also talked about having a mission statement for the board of trustees. That was actually uh, trustee Grissom that made that statement. So that correction needs to be made. Does anybody have any other comments about the board meeting minutes? No. Okay. Were there any questions or comments regarding the HR memo? Um, I do. I, for one, I'm glad to see that our guest teacher pool seems to be growing. That's awesome. Yes. Um, my other question would be if we have um, any exit interviews with any of these folks that are on here or um, I saw the one resignation letter. I don't know if Brooke has anything to say with that, but. And Brooke is on campaign. Yeah, the other two resignations. Um, yeah, there was, was anything a, provided for them? We have one letter, yeah. Oh, okay. She gives them the option every time. I think that she probably will give it to the board in the lump sum like she okay. did before, but I can okay. just follow up with her and sure. find okay. yep. out. I do know that she only could get one letter this time. Okay. okay. So well, I can I can certainly see for a coordinator we give a letter, but the new new deal or an aid. Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Um, I don't know who Jamie Irons is, but 
I haven't seen your last name. Wonderful guest teacher. I didn't know if you were related to her or not. But. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? Would we like to approve the consent consent agenda uh, in its entirety or break them apart? Um, I can move that we approve the consent agenda uh, with the uh, amendment to the meeting notes that you had made, the meeting minutes, as presented. I'll second that. Hearing a motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. I, I move to approve the HRMs as we said. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that. Oh, perfect. Hearing a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next, we have staff reports. Uh, appears the first presentation is from Dr. Lynn. Pasley of uh, Betty Kiefer Elementary. I have done it before, so I'll first one there. And then this clipper should work too if you want to. Nice. So I'm Lynn Pasley. I'm the principal at Betty Kiefer. First and foremost, thank you guys for having me. Second, this is absolutely the best place to work. I know every other principal probably would say the same thing, but I promise you it is the absolute best place to work. So we have the most amazing staff. We have great parents. We have great kids. I invite any of you at any time to come in and just check it out. Um, we just love our kids. We are a family. We say that all the time. We are such a community and it honestly is just an amazing place to be. So I love this place. And of course here does not matter for me. Let's see. <laughs> it was working. You can just use the uh, arrow key forward. Okay. It was working, I promise. I <laughs> okay, so academics. Was something I feel like we do really, really well. Um, last year, I kind of showed you guys this, and we were really just tracking. Um, so in our K-1, we have a 3-4, and we have a 5-6. We have looping, so which means is our kids stay with their teacher for two years. We do have some parameters in place, so like if parents feel like we need to have a child move for a variety of reasons, or if the teacher does, or we just need to kind of change up some of the dynamics, it's not a fixed situation. It gets pretty fluid. But we have noticed now this is our second year, and even though we had that, you know, we were gone for three months of school, our kids are definitely being able to maintain. So prior to us looping, we saw kids coming in at the primary level for first and second. They were easily coming in in that fall IRI at 30%, 20%, sometimes 40%. Um, and now we're just consistently seeing those numbers really high. So we're super proud of the fact that we're not seeing that regression in the summer. Um, I definitely think it's the fact that we are connected, those parents are super connected to those teachers. Um, we just were allowed to just continue that momentum of whatever we're doing. So that goes home with our parents over the summer. Um, we're also seeing in our intermediate grades where we are definitely looping. Um, so I think that really just speaks to the dedication of our teachers and our parents and our kids and just, you know, so just continuing to move forward. So I'm really proud of those fall ISIP data um, pieces. Um, differentiation, this is something I feel like Betty Keeper does really well. Again, here's our looping piece. Um, aside from the academic piece, there's a community piece that's just attached to that. The kids get to know each other super well. Um, you already know those systems. You already know what's happening. You know what the teacher's mindset is. You know what the kids are, those dynamics. So that really helps us. In our third grade, we did this with sixth grade as well, but we no longer have sixth grade. Um, we do a block schedule, which means we, again, make that pretty fluid, but one teacher is teaching math, one teacher teaches ELA, and this year we really have, instead of doing kind of a science social studies block, we included writing in there, so we have really strong writing time. We had data day to day, and we talked about how often are kids writing, are they getting a paragraph every single day, where's the instruction happening? 
Um, so just filling what we're being super intentional with those three subjects. And yes, we're still doing science and social studies, but it's through the lens of writing. So our kids are just getting more time with it, which is something we weren't doing really well. So I'm really proud of our third grade team for kind of stepping up with that. And then our fourth and fifth grade team has done, this is probably their fifth year now. Um, so we call it fluid deficit specific. So for instance, you could be doing something with fractions and you're in fourth grade and you might be struggling with reducing, but you're struggling with renaming and you're struggling with something different. And so each teacher will take a piece of fraction. So instead of just trying to teach to the middle, we're really being targeted. Um, every Friday, the teachers will give a quick little five point assessment and then just, okay, who has what? So it's not really about tracking kids or, okay, this is a struggling math kid, it really is. If this child is struggling, what, are, what does this child need? Regardless if you're strong at math, low at math, great at math, it doesn't matter. It's just really targeted to what we're seeing instead of just like whatever the book says, you're just following along to the next. It, it's, it's really about being targeted with what the kids need. So um, those are kind of how we're, we're addressing differentiation. And again, I think we're seeing the benefits in our ICIP and our iReady data. Um, something that we started this year, um, we're really, really academically strong, I feel like, and that's our focus all the time, but we were recognizing with our struggling learners that, for instance, if you do annotation with reading in first grade, maybe, um, you know, if, if you were, if an unknown word to reading something in an unknown word, maybe the first grade teachers were saying, okay, you put a box around it, but the second grade teachers were saying, well, we're going to put a triangle around it, or in third grade, you're saying we're highlighting it. Can we just recognize that consistency and not having that continuum as we move forward? Our struggling learners and even our not struggling learners, but mostly our struggling learners were really struggling with the ability to have to learn each teacher's right. style versus mm -hmm. I'm just building upon that style and I can annotate and I know how to do that so I can dive a little bit deeper because I don't have to use that working memory piece to figure out what you're asking me or what a different teacher is asking me. So this year, we decided to get really smart and this is not me, this would definitely be my teachers. So K through sixth grade, we created a, this is our annotation doc. So everybody is using the same thing. So if you need to underline important facts, it's underlined instead of like, again, first grade says circle, second grade says something different. This has really helped us for our kids with that consistency. So whichever class you go to, if you flex, whatever you're doing, it's always the same thing. So we're definitely seeing some positives there um, in the sense of our kids just being able to build that momentum and being able to really focus on content versus structure and trying to figure out those pieces. Um, the other thing we did, this is really sensitive. Um, it's the mouse is mirrored to the other TV one and it makes so it this easier. easier. That would make sense why I'm struggling. <laughs> why is it not going? Um, so we did the same thing with editing and today we did our data day and um, multiple grade levels just talked about this being really helpful. So again, when our kids are writing, if they're always trying to figure out, okay, what do I do if, if I have something wrong and what are those editing marks and what is this teacher asking versus what this teacher is asking if it's universal, then again, they're not having to spend time trying to interpret what we're doing. They can spend time on their content. So us going K through five on this has been super helpful. Last year we spent the time building this and this year we're finally implementing it. So we're feeling a lot of success with using those pieces K through five. <laughs> now it's a habit. Okay. This I just wanted to give. Oh, let me go back. I wanted to kind of find it. It's under that. Yeah. Do I just exit from here? Oh, I'll just come here really fast. This is gonna drive me crazy. I know I have to. I just wanted to give you guys kind of a sample of what we do. So today we met, I met with every grade level team the last two days, and it's really just our chance to just really talk about how are our kids doing, what do they need, what are they getting. We really try to look at, okay, here's our strategic kids, what we map out. So for reading, for instance, walk, let's walk through their whole entire day. What are they getting? When they go to this person, what does that look like? With their, when they're with their you know, grade level teacher, what does this look like? So we're really being really intentional about what we're providing, making sure that we're not missing anything. We even have, like we call it our outlier students that are really, really high kids. They're in first grade and they're meeting, they're at the second grade level or some, sometimes at the third grade level. 
we want every child to be challenged, so are we really focusing on making sure that we're challenging that kid regardless if you're high, medium, or low? Um, so this is kind of just our structure we get into. Here's our instruction. So again, we really talk about what does that look like? What materials are we using? Is it working? Are we seeing that we're seeing the kids continue to you know, go up? Are we seeing, is it a curriculum issue? Is it, uh, you know, we're not spending enough time on something? So we get two hours to just really dive into what we're doing from the instructional standpoint to make sure that we're making righteous decisions to help our kids. So this is just kind of a sample. We do all reading, math. So, and then we just take notes. You can kind of see um, things that we just kind of say, oh, we're gonna need to do a better job here, or we need to step up our game here. We're recognizing that we taught it some way and we need to change how we're teaching because the kids aren't getting it that way. So um, I just wanted to give you a sample of what a data day looks like. Here is our behavior focus, and really I should have labeled this our SEL focus. Um, I think at Betty Key first, something that we do really well is we're really proactive instead of reactive. So if you can see, we have a lot of things in place at tier one, not as many at tier three, because our hope is that if we're providing this for all kids and making sure that we're equipping them with skills to handle those ever flowing changes, student issues, homework issue, I didn't get breakfast that morning issues, all those kind of things that come up in a day, we really try to teach them to utilize strategies so that they don't have to get here and then it's a, uh, you know, I'm escalated. So um, we put a lot of things in place. We have mentor time for our kids. We provide alternative recess. We do a lot of te teach twos. I would say we have the best counselor on the planet. She's amazing. Um, and just my, our SPED teacher is really, really good. And again, just really has a heart for kids. And so we're always looking at all of these systems and what can we have happen in the classroom. So it's just a team effort. So the language is all the same. We all talk about zones. We all do community meetings. We all talk about calming and de-escalation strategies, just really equipping kids with, okay, when you're frustrated, when your mom didn't pack the right lunch or you left it at home, like what does that look like? And then how do we help them problem solve it? So our goal is always to promote that independence. And so instead of always having an adult come in and rescue, how do we help you feel like you have sustainability and being able to problem solve your own issues? And in our opinion, that starts with tier one and just really helping them, you know, be independent. So I feel like that's something that Betty Kiefer does really well. And this is just our fun stuff. I won't make you guys watch it because they're super long, but we really just really tried to protect this year just in light of everything that's happened. Um, we still do our grade level competitions. We're still doing our monthly assemblies, but they're all remote. So we, we show the kids, but they have a great time. So, you know, later on when you're step away, you want to kind of see some kids and smile and laugh and see some fun stuff happening. In our monthly assemblies, we always do some type of character building. So um, anyways, I just wanted you guys to see some of the fun stuff that's happening. Um, not just the nuts and bolts of, you know, education and school and academics. Oh, it's going to show that. I don't need to see that. It's going to take forever. Okay, this one I'm going to let you see. So. Um, this year we started, uh, I have an assistant principal and she's amazing. She started doing morning announcements. It was really funny because initially we thought we were going to do it like once a week. And so she made the mistake of asking the staff, do you want it once a week? Do you want it every day? They said every day. So she does this every <laughs> single day. Um, the kids love it. And we just kind of highlight birthdays and just do some of that fun stuff. That everybody does a flag salute. It's just a really fun way to start the morning. So I'll give you an example of one of her productions. <laughs> For lunch today, we're having nachos. Breakfast tomorrow, tricks. <laughs>
just wanted you guys to get a sense of the kids and yeah, that's mm -hmm. happiness. Yes, thank you. So this is the other piece I just wanted to add, like just again, back to our family and our community. Again, we still try to just keep some of the fun stuff. So three times a year, we I end up having to dress up <laughs> um, and uh, we give books to kids and we read to them and we give candy. That's our admin team, but the staff really dresses up. We had a turkey trot this year that was super fun. And just again, trying to have school be school and make it as fun as we can and getting out of the box a little bit, recognizing that obviously we, you know, this is a pandemic and it's a different year, but still trying to make it the best it can be. So I just wanted to add those pieces. Here's our goals. Um, again, these are kind of our three mainstays. We always have these. Um, we make little tweaks here and go, but it's just really about student achievement is huge. We really want our kids to do the absolute best they can and be really intentional about how we do that. Um, and again, it's super important for us that our kids recognize that failing is part of learning. And so that being, they're, they're being okay with that. We don't talk a lot about grades. We don't talk a lot about assessments. We don't talk a lot about ISATs or IRIs or any of that. It's just like we want kids learning the standards and walking away feeling like we gave them the best education possible. I say all the time to my staff, I have three boys in the district and I want every classroom at my school to be exactly what I want for my own kids because I think that's what parents want too. So, and then we have our safe haven and then our positive community. And again, if we, we feel like if we match all three of those and that's what we work towards, then we've done our job, so. And then this is for you guys. Thanks for keeping us in school. Thanks for keeping us safe and in school. Yeah. We just want to say thank you so much for keeping us safe and keeping us in school. Thanks for keeping us in school. <laughs> So cute. <laughs> well, I think you guys probably haven't heard a lot of yeah. things. <laughs> you know, I just thought that was very thoughtful. Too, Thank so. you. Thank you. Um, any questions for me? Good job. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Thank you for. It's an awesome place. Honestly, you guys, you come anytime. You just walk the hall, see the kids. It's just an amazing place to be. You just can't help but smile when you walk through those doors. Yeah. And there's three people that can t attest that the kids have been there. So four people, sorry, Chrissy. Yeah. So it just is a great place. It's a unique, a unique school. And I know everyone will say that about their own school, but so. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It looks like up, net, up next is the superintendent's report. Well, I know I told you that it might not be back, but it is back. So we thought we were going to have one meeting uh, without it, but it is back. We have an updated winter 2020-21 guidelines, um, and it's for the stage two governor's order, but they updated it as of Monday, they updated it again. Uh, it's in your plan, which I will open up now. And I have again uh, put it into the yellow, since we are in the yellow stage, I've highlighted it in that bright yellow. And these, this is the only update I have. The Board of Trustees, I'm gonna make it bigger so people can see it. So the Board of Trustees has approved the following guidelines for all extracurricular activities, which include athletics, as well as band, choir, drama, speech debate, FFA, et cetera, activities. That the board had approved last time. That's the wording that I worked with uh, Chairman Thompson to come up with. And then this is the actual link to the update as of Monday. That's the 40% of the gymnasium, social appropriate social, social distancing. There's no consequences in the prior um, thing we as, that we assigned is null and void. I just 
every time we do a change, I feel like it's important for us to tell the public and for the board to be aware and approve. Yes, definitely. Any questions on that? So is it appropriate for me to start going to some sporting events then? <laughs> yes. 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 Up to 40%. <laughs> Dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's started. Um, they started. I, I had asked the board to make sure that there wasn't. I mean, it was passed down the same similar fashion as the last one, but I want to make sure there was no objections. And then um, it is, according to our board, it also is for FFA and choir. There's plays going to be coming up. So I have a question with respect to this being high school athletics the junior highs i know off also offer like wrestling and that sort of thing yes yeah, are for, they included? it actually is for all okay uh, yeah perfect all. even if people had no level of sixth grade it would still apply to that perfect yeah okay so that's the first thing uh the next thing is i'm going to do a, a little bit of update on the charter school application uh, we had a, a teeny bit of miscommunication that I'm going to uh, work on from this point forward of making sure anytime there's applications, I, um, I'm going to talk to the entire board, not just the board chair about it. And it, we have uh, Elevate North Academy, which is applied. It's actually a person that we had had uh, before visit the district and talk in the district. It's a great uh, philosophy, but I did write something to the um, commission for charter schools uh, that it, I'm, what I'm worried about for, uh, in this North Idaho is a supply and demand. The number of charter schools we have versus the number of students we have, um, I just think there might be, uh, we might be getting charter heavy in, in North Idaho. It has a great philosophy though, and it does create more choice for students and families, which we are always in favor of that hearing is going forward and I think there is for at risk if you didn't have a chance to read through the entire thing that, that when she came and met uh, with the districts um, there's a tiny bit of competition with K-Tech with 11th and 12th but it's going to be designed for at risk kids that qualify under the at risk funding so it'll be like alternative school funded funding for 6 through 12th but hands on CTE type of hands on with airplane airplanes and the whole flight. So, Sweet. Yeah. That's one that's coming up. And then the Kootenai Classical Academy did um, have an application, a petition in, which would affect our district. Has a, I did write back that it did not appear that the student enrollment uh, would be targeting the same population that um, attends our public schools in Raftrum. Um, so I didn't have an issue with that. It was also very much on a smaller, much smaller scale. But they did withdraw their application last week, so that's no longer in petition. They may be changing things, and it may come back, and I will certainly then bring it to the entire board um, if I get that application again. And so any future petitions are going to go to the whole board. And um, just to reference, who's in charge of it? And by statute, they have to give us 30 days, but it's for the district, not the board. So she did clarify that she'd made a mistake in that email. Okay. Um, which Chairman Thompson and I received uh, that she, so from now on, we were, we're just make sure that there's better communication uh, with that and ask that it, something be sec, at least have a second person that CC on the email. So uh, that was a good learning opportunity for us moving forward. So any questions about that? Um, and CFO Wallace will help me if you have um, any intricate questions. He's been dealing quite a bit. Our superintendent's group and our Idaho Association of, of School Administrators has been dealing with this quite a bit. Um, but Brian is on is a board member on IASBO, so he's um, deep into the discussions at the state level. The governor's budget recommendations, which I'm sure you have either followed in capital notes or in the paper or online, um, there's quite a hubbub that there's a proposed mid-year changes again, they're likely to go through. Again, we can't speak for the legislature, but there is mid-year changes where we would be changing. Last year, remember there was the 5% and then the 1% holdback this year. If, um, if this goes through the areas, we're gonna unfreeze the career ladder. So 
It will unfreeze all of that that has been frozen for this year after we've already done our budgeting and already have everything contracts and everything out. But they also will be adding the advanced professional endorsement. Um, Ms. Sexton linked in there the criteria that you might want to look at later. It's uh, from the law and she um, sits on a committee that really has done a lot of work with teacher evaluations. And she and Brooke worked through an entire spreadsheet of every single employee and all the criteria that must meet. And we thought this was gonna start next fall. And so now it might be happening a lot sooner. So it is putting, I just kind of want the board to be aware that it is putting some new responsibilities uh, or just some shifting responsibilities that would go from next, that we we're planning on looking at the summer that would be happening sooner. So I will, though two of them have been working on this and I've been in contact with the state so we're, we're getting prepared. That's that one. Also, we would reinstitute leadership premiums according to the governor's recommendation. There were some logistics we will be needing to work out because again, we did not have that. And there's a lot of stipulations by law that it must be a minimum of $900. There's only certain areas. And if we're already midway or past it, through the year, we are not quite sure how this is gonna work yet. I brought it up today um, with the state, uh, with the governor's office with Greg Wilson. He will be speaking with our region one superintendents group tomorrow morning. So I might have more information for the board after that call. That's a pretty big change. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some definite question marks around it. Then the uh, big one, reducing, area, reducing the discretionary funds. So we are initially, when Brian did the budget, the support unit was 27,556. This would go to 21,730 per support unit. It equates, it could be approximately, again, I'm not gonna, but it would be a, right about 1.56 million for our district if it was just that piece of it. So we aren't, we aren't gonna freak out yet. We're not saying this is going to happen. It likely that it's happening, but it really is based on the legislature and what's going to move forward we will just keep you apprised i just wanted you to kind of have a heads up that this may be coming so any questions that brian or i can answer for the board on budgetary considerations um at some point can we get um more in-depth explanation of exactly what those things are you know who how are these affected yes you know, throughout the district, who is it affecting? What is, I mean, are we talking, you know, staff or programs or both, or, yeah. you know, just a better understanding of what we might yeah. have to deal with. So um, as far as uh, it's, this isn't anything to do about any cutting staff or right. changes that way. Um, it's at this point, it, it, it really looks like the governor, if this goes through, the governor says, Here's your discretionary funds, which means you have a general fund pot of money, and then you say how it goes. And it may be shifted to saying you have to earmark it for these areas, which would then, mm -hmm. after you've already done your budget for the year and then you get over halfway, it does make CFO Wallace's job harder. Um, and he has been on the phone with several CFOs in other districts. What I would suggest, instead of us going into too much detail right now, um, unless people have questions for, for him, I, this is more of a heads up okay. and we are going to know as they meet every day and go forward we will have more information i don't want to presuppose anything's going to happen and give you too much information and then we backtrack but i think the board workshop coming up that you're all going to talk about tonight that could quite possibly if we move more forward on this at the state level i think that brian and i would be able to work with the board in a workshop format would be really good to go a little bit sure more yeah okay if that meets um, so the, again, this is the, I'm going to be on until we have the vote on March 9th. Um, I've, Lisa and I finished every virtual staff presentation. We had the recorded Emmy award winning 18 minute levy presentation um, that the, every staff member watched, I'm sure the entire thing and they loved it. Um, uh, and so that's on the website. Uh, as are several pieces of it broken up, but then we did a question and answer with every staff person. So people had submitted questions and we, we went through that. So that every, as of yesterday, every staff person had the opportunity uh, to do that with us. 
We have every day updating our link with further information. I'm trying to have two to three informational pieces that are added every week to keep it refreshed and keep new things coming that people have asked us for or interested in our at questions that we're receiving that we're trying to address when we, um, from the patrons and the parents. So our info mailer is getting the info is getting uh, went to the printers yesterday that will be mailed out so it should be by the, um, hopefully by the end of the week uh, or by the beginning of next week for sure. So that will be going out. I put it in there for the board. Um, you, I did email a Skylar that you saw with the tax bill comparison with Mr. Wallace's actual bill and his video, which we've got a lot of, he's actually really good on video, um, and we've got a lot of compliments. So other districts are now actually going to take his script and do their own or just use his. So um, that's good. I think that's good kudos for our district. And then putting what we did the first one, community presentations that we're still looking uh, for right now. Whoops, it is, it's just the same thing one. Uh, community presentations until that public is overrid, overrode, overrid, overridden. I always say the wrong word for that. That it, we're going to keep to under 10 until that time. And consistent, this is my new saying, consistent communication with, uh, if we have an educated citizenry, when they go to vote, it will increase voter turnout. Mm -hmm. I just feel like we need to increase. With only 17% of parents voting, we need to, our thing has to be, let's educate people, give people the facts, and then they make their own decision, but let's get the voter turnout up mm -hmm. this year. So that's our goal. Consistent communication will create an educated citizen to increase voter turnout. I have a question. Um, in this in thinking of the governor's order there were two exceptions to the order um faith-based exceptions and uh political exceptions and voting on something sort of political i wonder if community share because it is something to do with voting in political it's going to be on a ballot yeah if that gives us the ability to have more than 10 people. I'm gonna ask that tomorrow morning because that's a really good question. Um, I'm gonna be on the phone with the governor's office tomorrow, so I'm gonna ask that. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll ask. This is a highlight celebration. I was gonna wait, but I just couldn't. It came out uh, the other day. <laughs> I'm going to, I do an annual presentation to the board in February saying the graduation rate and then give you a surrounding districts and everything, you know, kind of give you last year's, this year growth. Oh my gosh, this is so wonderful. We're at 97, 96.7 through a pandemic. It's like absolutely phenomenal. I can tell you it's higher than surrounding districts and I, which I'll give you next month, but uh, Lakeland High School is 97.5, Timberlake 97.2, Mountain View is at 87%. And once I also have this five year cohort, these are four year cohorts. When I show you the five year cohorts, which at risk kids are part of a five year, you're, you're going to be blown away. But I'll give you the presentation next week. I just I mean, next meeting, but I just couldn't wait to tell you that. So oh, that's awesome. That's that's really great. That is great. This well is done. a really big thing for the public to know because this is our report card. How mm -hmm. many people do we get through their 13 years here and graduate in our district? This is absolutely phenomenal. So um, it's really has to do with the wonderful staff that we have. Right. So it is really awesome. Okay, one more thing in um, our in the um, superintendent's report, and this will be going out to the public. And I'm going to send this is in your board packets, but uh, I have a letter that's going out this weekend to the patrons. We're at the mid year, which means that I do the accountability report on their levy dollars. And so this is just a brief highlight. I would welcome any suggestions you have when you look at it um, as we're going through it today. So this is the, um, I'm not gonna read this to you. You can read it, but this is really my letter to the patrons where I explain any sort of conditions. Um, if you will remember last June when I did the end of the year accountability report, just mm -hmm. congratulating that we could keep all of our programs and our instructional integrity based on going through the COVID that we kept everything. We have had a few changes we've had to make this year with the 6% have pulled back and the social distancing. You already know about the specials at the elementary um, and some other small class sizes preps at the end of the day, all of those types of things. Um, 
But one thing I really highlighted in here is we have had a few things that have had to be on pause, but our district developed, we really met the students where they were at and we let those families have, do you wanna be online? Do you wanna be in person? But we are the only school district in the area that's been in person at all of the school, five days a week, all year. And the statistics are proving that that was the board made the right decision. And um, I just feel like the only reason we could do it is just based on everyone working together. Yay. So um, our goal is always to be academically rigorous, safe and supportive environment, and then fiscally uh, conservative approach, which I feel we've done a really good job with that. Uh, Trustee Major already read our mission statement, um, so it remains the same no matter what. Accountability to the taxpayer, these are all the ways the taxpayers can show that we're accountable. They can come listen to um, Brian's budget presentation at the first meeting, or they can listen on Zoom. Um, we have uh, two times a year accountability reports, we do surveys, strong return on investment. So these are all ways that we're accountable to the patrons. These are all the ways that we have collected their information. So I'm giving the, the results back out to the patrons in the accountability report. The spring annual state surveys for the accreditation that the state does, we don't show those out because they're on the report card on the website. They're available for each school, um, but it's not a district one, so. Again, I already did the report with you in the presentation on the parent survey, but I think it's important in the accountability report that people remember what they really like most about this district, nearly 50% is the teachers and the staff. So it's important that we remind the public that we are really being, you know, we're accountable to the patrons. Look at what you like. This is such a great staff. And overall in the district, we have over 86% parent satisfaction level. This is, remember the one from extremely dissatisfied up to fives. Um, and this was in October when we were first just starting and there was definitely polar, polarized opinions mm -hmm. about how uh, being in yellow five days a week, you know, masks were recommended when social distancing could not be maintained. So I feel like this is even skewed a little bit differently, like, you know, but it's still is super positive. Um, in the middle of the start of a pandemic and, the, and us figuring it out. So I'm super pleased with that. And nobody skipped that question. <laughs> they all answered it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, so your taxpayer dollars, this is the last year, I want to make it clear to the public, it's the last year of our two-year instructional levy. Hence why we're going for a vote on March. Um, the reports include, the report includes projects and programs maintained, ones that we've completed and anything that's been paused, which we do have this year. This year, instead of listing them out, I did a spreadsheet and then Chrissy today uh, put them into three different sheets. It was too long, obviously, and people won't be able to see it. But when you have, when I share out the document, it will be one long document for people to look at. And I put it into two groups. The project or the program is completed or maintained through June. I want them to know what we completed and stayed in place through the end of the year. And then based on the 6% holdback, what things were paused and we did not continue. I want to be really transparent with the voters. These are things that we did not continue so that they are saying, wait, why did we do that? Why didn't we do that? So we didn't maintain the same staffing levels. That's a blank there. We did not maintain the elementary advanced learning program. It will go back into effect next year based on, you know, once we have full funding, that will go back into effect. All of these things were in place. Uh, the SRO program in Raftrum, you know, we have the, arc, the two armed guards, but that program was put on pause. Uh, the district safety task force team is working on that piece. All these other things are in, in still in place. The uh, field trips were really, you know, a bus thing, a COVID thing, a social distancing thing, plus also funding. So those were put on hold, on pause. The activity buses were on pause. We talked about that as a district. Those were that second bus run that runs after people have done an activity or stayed active or after school help. Um, and everything else was kept in place. So I think we did a pretty good job um, of the programs. The, I think where the biggest piece that people felt was the staffing um, and having those holdbacks this year. 
So that moving forward, we want to maintain transparency, continue to gather input from our stakeholders. We want to make sure that people still have a voice and continue to gather feedback from them. I think it's really helped the board to have it make informed decisions to have that information. And then again, back to our mission is we will always be maximizing student learning for each, every individual child. So then they can ask me questions. The board certainly can ask me questions, but uh, this would be going to the public um, for them to feel like we're continuing on with our transparency and accountability reports. So does the board have any questions? No. no. I would say, um, when you told them about the, the budget, you said first meeting, maybe delete the Tuesday because I know we're kind of in oh, flux of whether it's Thursday. Tuesday or Thursday, and it, it kind of got some you know, change of board meetings from Tuesday to Thursday. But Except, is that a reflection that last year we did Tuesdays, or is it for this year we're doing? Well, this is a letter she's sending out right there at the board meeting. Oh, thank you. Okay. I. Yeah, and I don't even. Know I, I think I'll just put schedule on the website yes. so yes. that it's not on there. I will change that. Yeah, okay. Maybe so if you're not saying one way yeah. or the other, absolutely. I, I think I'll change it and just say schedule available on the website under board. Okay, yeah, that's good. Good catch. Yes, good. Catch. Yeah. Um, hey, any other? Uh, any other? Uh, Questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mayer. That moves us into discussion items. We have a first read on the update to policy 1500 regarding board members. Uh, let's see here. This, I believe, was a statute change. Is that correct? Yeah, there was some statute modifications. So we added language um, with respect to what the statute required. Does anyone have any questions or comments regarding the proposed changes? Not on my end. Okay. We would move on then to the first read of the update to policy 3300 for drug free school zones. This also was uh, a uh, statute change, I believe. There it yep. is. There's statute change and uh, the addition of uh, tobacco products yeah. being added underneath the definition, which is also statute change. Does anyone have any um, comments or uh, questions regarding the suggested changes to the policy? It's great. Okay. Next for um, discussion items, we have the board meeting schedule. Um, it's kind of clumped together. Board meeting schedule, agenda layout, workshop dates and times. Um, there's a whole bunch of items in there. Um, last board meeting, we did agree to change the board meetings to Thursdays, and it would have been a good time to talk about whether or not five o'clock works for everybody. Um, as far as my understanding is, we all have, the three females, have a fairly flexible schedule, but you have a committed time schedule with your employer. And I know that sometimes our board meetings run long, and we have the option of possibly starting the board meetings earlier. 
I didn't know if that oh, would <laughs> work for your schedule. Yeah, yeah. Or study. Yeah, okay. absolutely. You tell after, us after nine o'clock in the morning. My schedule is very flexible. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, so I figure it's it's worth a discussion, and then we can um, implement. Do, Chrissy, would we need to implement an action item at the next agenda to alter the times, or can we do that today? You build that into this agenda and the okay. action items. Oh, and, okay, perfect. Um, so it's down there in the event okay. you guys want. Okay, good. Um, because it is a concern of mine that, I mean, we want to uh, we want to be efficient, but it's, it's not good when we're like, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. can't handle it. Um, on top of that, I also would like to see us move workshops to not be right before the board meeting. Mm -hmm. So it would mean like possibly during the week instead of doing everything back to back, just do one on a Tuesday and the meeting on a Thursday. Because I struggle with getting fed so much information and then going into a board meeting and having to apply what I've just been fed in such a short amount of time to make decisions. So I think it's best for us to have the workshop before like literally way before the board meeting and then come into the board meeting with a better perspective better uh, position to ask the appropriate questions to make the right decisions so with those two ideas in mind what time would we like to consider changing the board meetings to i mean i don't personally you know you, you want constituents to be able to attend. Right. So Correct. I don't think that moving it any sooner than four would be, okay. would be really appropriate because a lot of people, not just us, right. it right. doesn't have to be a public meeting. So correct. That is correct. I mean, I don't think. And I don't want to create a... I don't a, know what you guys are... Well, for me, I don't want to create a situation where we're giving the uh, presumption that we're trying to exclude people. Right. But I am also aware that like Panhandle Health District I believe the county commissioners now hold their board meetings at noon. I'm not for that. I'm just saying it doesn't seem that um, there is a concern with bumping the time up for those that meetings that require public involvement. The one thing that I didn't really consider is if we did bump to like four, Dr. Meyer, mm -hmm. how would that impact your schedule or Mr. Wallace's schedule? Or we're, we're, we're fine with that. Okay. Yeah, we're, okay. We can be available anytime. Okay. To do it on Thursdays. Okay. Yeah. All right. What are you guys impression? Uh, well, four sounds great. However, going back to you know most of our parents are working parents. Mm -hmm. I think five o'clock. I think is. Um, probably in my opinion, the cutoff time for anything earlier than that. And I understand others have made the decision to have in the middle of the day, but we really do um, exclude a lot of people and we tend to have a very uh, involved uh, community. True. Um, so that's, that's the only thing I would be concerned about is that uh, if we went any earlier than five o'clock that there might be too much of an exclusion um, for their participation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we set them at five o'clock and then if we have an executive session scheduled, like earlier, for example, today, mm -hmm. we could have started at four, executive session doesn't really apply. Right. right. So maybe that's the time yeah. that we go with and then we schedule our executive before right. if we have to, that way it doesn't like you know stretch mm -hmm. the meeting out. Yeah, later. absolutely. I'm I'm good with that. Yeah. yeah, and we can do that, right? Chrissy just pulled the executive sessions out of the regular meetings. Oh yeah. Exactly. Do them beforehand, and then um, at least we would be getting all of that done. Thoughts, Debbie? Or trust? I um. I wonder how many people. So we have a lot of we have people watch on Zoom. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you want to know how many are on tonight. Um, you want to know how many are on tonight? Oh, it's three. So um, I don't know. I'm thinking during the day. I mean, are people really 
are they coming to watch it later or because what participation can they really have right. really i mean there's not much they can participate in true. anyway yeah. right so i guess my i'm just throwing this out here no, as a thought just a so thought. we can all talk about this Please. so if we record it and they can come and watch it later really what does it matter because I guess it does matter when people want to come and sit in the audience and that hasn't happened for a long time. So I'm right. just answering my own question here mm -hmm. in talking about it. So I guess that would be the concern if people wanted to actually come to the meeting and voice their opinion and have their input that would in impede them from doing that. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe my thoughts of having it early in the day aren't you know, maybe that's not a good idea. Like, like you had mentioned. Yeah, right. because Hopefully, this won't go on forever. Oh, it and won't. <laughs> well, yeah, it's been almost a year now. I'm starting to wonder: <laughs> is this the new normal? <laughs> well, Rob, you having the longest experience as a sitting board member, what is your impression of patron participation as far as sitting in the meetings? Oh, I will say that we we've had more participation prior to the pandemic. The, that previous six months, we had more participation. Okay. So I think that would be a concern. Okay. I think that the five o'clock is probably prudent because we will get past the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We will have uh, larger gatherings and we will have participation here. Okay. So I mean, really, that's fine. But I do think that um, scheduling the the executive sessions beforehand mm -hmm. is probably going to help. Okay, so then can we agree that it would be hoove us to change executive sessions to the start of the meeting so that we can start earlier and then go right into the meeting so that we're not here till. That works for your guys' schedule. Yeah. Definitely yeah. Works for mine. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, that sounds good. And then to your point about the workshops, you know, for me, it doesn't make any difference. I have a tendency. <laughs> we have, uh, you know, some right. have a little more of a drive, so, you know, I True. have a flexible schedule and I live close. <laughs> I just don't like being fed so much information all at once yeah. and not oh, being able to process. Makes it makes okay. my brain tired. Like, I just go home <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is so much. I'm with you. Okay. And it makes it hard to make clear concise decisions and to have clear concise discussions mm -hmm. when i'm so overloaded so i do like the idea of breaking them up because it makes it so that i'm fresher and can keep up and keep my snarkiness on Yay! on cue <laughs> perfect okay that makes me happy because um i just think that it would it would allow us to become more productive and more cohesive when we're not just cramming so much in yes. on one day. Um, now at the last uh, board meeting, it was tossed out there that we as a board should take the time to develop a mission statement, some goals, etc. Um, which that should be done, I would think, in a workshop yep. form, correct? Yep. Okay, so we would want to schedule a workshop for that. So, no, 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 that's okay. I just want to make sure you all hear that, that um, how soon would we like to put that on the agenda? Yes, Dr. Meyer. I want to make sure that if we can do that, the sooner the better is great with me. I want to make sure we don't lose sight of that budget workshop because that right. it was really important. That's to next Tuesday. That before. Yeah, way before. <laughs> yeah, because yes. we want to and we need to follow up and have mm -hmm. questions. And stuff. Correct. So we, and it's just a crazy kind of year, so I want to make sure we don't we don't overwhelm you where somebody can't come to the budget workshop. One of the board members. Right. Right. So and when is the budget workshop? I believe it's the, the ninth. ninth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm good with that too. The the sooner the better that we can get rolling on the new year with those things. Um, obviously, we have to. It would either have to be uh, next week sometime or following week. Or, um, okay. Well, in thinking about the workshops, though, um, with respect to the public being involved with that as well. 
are we thinking of keeping those also at the five o'clock time or can we consider doing them earlier um, or the, by statute the only ones that the public has to be involved in is the budget and curriculum any other workshop that we're not statutorily obligated to have public input or participation okay so then running the curriculum or the sorry little sleep myself <laughs> um the our regular workshops that we're just trying to get things hammered out goals, we could do that, yeah, yeah we could do that at say like a three o'clock or earlier as long as the lunch, board meeting whatever. was yeah, yeah lunch would be perfect yeah. as long as this uh i can check right now the room was open i can check right now sure um what about the second of february it'd be next tuesday uh it's busy oh around. go ahead what do you say would that not work for you, Rob? No, my, my daughter's birthday. Okay. That's up with grandson, so we're planning a big to do okay. Tuesday. That would be the only. <laughs> about Wednesday? Go to the next day? or Sure. Work oh, is there anything within the next week where the conference room is open that it's might work? most open on Thursday the 4th. Okay. Um, okay. And you could also do the afternoon of Wednesday the 3rd you wanted to okay like after noon noon and after okay i'm good with thursday i will thursday. not be here thursday but okay okay so not thursday, a worry so wednesday sounds like we would wednesday work for you mm -hmm. okay could we do wednesday at um three o'clock Are we going to put that on the new board calendar? Yes. Yeah, we put it on the calendar right now. Um, I'm on the board of trustees. Um, Chairman Thompson? Yes. Would you like um, Ms. Sexton and I to facilitate that, like we had talked about, or did you have a different process you wanted to use? Um, um, we talked about telling, showing you how we did it with mm -hmm. the, everyone's input and doing the funneling activity and stuff, but we're, so we're available, I don't know, let me check. We're Trustee available. Grissom, what do you think? Yeah, okay. okay, sure. Yep. If you guys are available, that would be great. Yeah, we would like to, and then you could always refine it or do further after that, but that would be a good starting fun mm -hmm. spot. Yeah. So Wednesday at three. Right? Wednesday. And I'll put a yeah. meeting request Perfect. in the board calendar to you all. Perfect. Thank you. The budget workshop is coming the following week. Yes. Um, and then we wanted to do a workshop. Uh, regarding what we have learned through uh, ISBA training through the convention, um, the open meeting law training, etc. When would that work for everyone to do? Um, are we participating, attending on the virtual day on the hill? Oh, yeah. I, okay. That's another part of my discussion okay. thing. So I'm about. wondering if we should just sort of do hold on to on the it hill and then just sort of put it all together and have a meeting of the minds after yes. we participate in both of those yes because day on the hill is coming yes. um and it's my understanding that we can attend well, it's attendance is virtual mm -hmm. and it's a it's a fairly minimal fee for all of us i mean it's like a one one shot mm -hmm. does all fee um so are we in a consensus that we would like to do day on the hill yes okay no, okay. I was just talking about doing just the virtual session. Yeah, Thank you. not a worry. Not over. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so if that's the fifteenth of February, of yeah. February, then. Um, Do we want to do the 17th, which would be a Wednesday, or what are you guys? I need to figure out how to get to that calendar thing again. Because uh, I don't have Google, Google open. This so is February. Let me open mm -hmm. the email thing. So February 15th is a Monday. Oh, you gave me a calendar thing. 
I don't know if it's oh, President's Day. I don't know if that matters. Fifteen. Yeah, that's the day on the hill. Uh, that's when virtual. Is. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's on our calendar. Okay. Um, and then so then we have basically nothing the rest of the week until um, you know the following week is our our optional board meeting. So. And I may be out of town now last week in February. Okay. I hope you. <laughs> okay. So you're going somewhere Not more. That I don't like y'all, but that, Mexico's that. calling my name. <laughs> oh, my husband can get his passport in time. I'm hoping. So we should stick with the same week as the uh, board meeting? Day on the Hill. Oh, then. Day on the Hill. We would probably leave like on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So Monday or Tuesday would work on that 23rd, 22nd, 23rd. Is that what you're talking about? Or or just staying in the same week of the 15th through the 19th sure, if you're going to be gone. Mm -hmm. um, so do they, in, you give me the date again? Yeah, so the 15th of February is the Day on the Hill session. We would participate at our offices, our homes, wherever we will be. But then are we wanting to come back together here to share information of what we learned for the Day on the Hill and ISBA's other it would be, I would think that would be the best time to just sort of okay. culminate everything we've recently learned. On and the just, same day? No, 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 not oh, on the okay. day on the hill day, but so after, that was the are you kidding me? <laughs> My little brain would not work. So, so what is the boardroom uh, availability look like for that week? We'll say Wednesday or Thursday, or okay. Thursday is tight for you for the afternoon, right? Or I, I already talked to okay. my person. So it, it, it's really cool on Tuesday. Okay. Um, <laughs> Wednesday, we can certainly have it available. We have a uh, building admins meeting, but we've been having in the buildings to socially distance mm -hmm. and have each other on the table spread out in gymnasiums. So you can certainly, Wednesday, all day, you could have uh, this mm -hmm. anytime. Okay. So should we do Wednesday, the 17th? Does that sound fine for you guys? Sure. It gives you a day of... Anytime after about 11. Okay. Yeah, and I'm good on the Wednesday. Anytime that works for you guys. You too, anytime after 11. Well, you guys I would, I'd like to do it at around 3. If 3, work. okay. Yeah. Let's take 17. Okay. And then, oh, now I have to go back over here. Got it. Uh, just so we have the right, because they'll say no board action when they're posting. Correct. Um, make sure I get this right. It's Stanley Hill and ISBA convention debrief and no sharing. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And open meeting law, just in case there's anything we haven't. Brought out yet. The other item um, under the one I point three is um, the agenda layout. Um, our agenda does something that drives me crazy, um, wherein we are putting on the action item the actual motion that we're presenting. Mm -hmm. um, it's my knowledge and understanding that that's really not how it should be. The action item should actually be that an item that we discuss and then we create the motion at the meeting and whoever wants to bring the motion brings it out. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few samples up on the thing that I can show you guys. I personally would like to change the agenda, but if everybody else is in favor of just keeping with the status quo i can also respect that but it is something that has been kind of a a thing for me because <laughs> i feel like what we're doing in providing the motion is showing the public that we're not thinking about it this is just what we have to vote on is what the motion is already written out for us um it's always been my understanding that the action item is exactly that an item that you discuss 
And if action needs to be taken regarding it, then it is made. So um, I was supposed to <laughs> um, provide samples for you all that I was thinking about, and I was uh, remiss in doing that. So my only concern with that is that as a new person, mm -hmm. sometimes it becomes very overwhelming when you feel like it's your turn when you're when you're thinking about making the motion mm -hmm. you get nervous right and then you can't think about what you're trying to say and so it's it is nice to have something there to look at okay so maybe if we kind of talked about that and maybe you know the, the person who's thinking of right of, of, of mm -hmm. what it would be we kind of like talk about it for the newbies okay because we're obviously going to be getting somebody new, new yes. here soon yes and so i liked that just in terms of kind of letting me know okay this is what a primer right kind of a primer on what a, this what is how you would present although i think that what you're saying is definitely true mm -hmm. that it does give the impression that we are just doing what we're told mm -hmm. instead of coming up with our own ideas and discussion and making decisions together as a board instead of having this all pre pre planned out right. ahead of time. So I think that you're right. I think that um, if we change it, mm -hmm. it'd be really great to kind of um, Help little newbies like me figure out it's okay i still need the paper because i don't know all the yeah. words <laughs> no i think it's great i think it's a really great idea mm -hmm. i can see why these are here though you know what i, I you know what i, I, I can yeah. see where this would be a comfort okay rob um i mean i think it's uh you know we determine what is on the agenda mm -hmm. that's posted so that the people know they can make comments on the specific. Is that is that are we should we have you know like to me that would be like a bullet point. This is what we're talking about. We discuss it and then we either approve or deny this. And this was determined by the chair and the you know the superintendent. The superintendent or a couple of the trustees and it's a specific that we put in even though it seems like canned to me it's just those are the things we organization decided kind of, yeah. need to discuss and this is the action it's either going to be we're either going to be you know for or against it mm -hmm. but this was brought up this was a point that we needed right i, I sometimes i think you know i kind of feel like maybe the you know, the car comes for a horse and the fact that we have a motion before we, it used to be even worse. <laughs> oh no, don't say that. No, it did. <laughs> when I first started, it was like, well, do we even get to talk about it? Right. I mean, okay. It's always, it's, well, it's always that. discussion. But I mean, it's just, it's just, you know. Right. Well, the struggle I have is there have been a few times that the motion's been written and that's what we have to say, but that's not what I want to motion. And I can't just, and, and it has happened to me because it's like, I don't like how that's worded. This is what I want it to say. And it's like, well, this is what's on the agenda. So this is your motion. So that's, that removes the responsibility of us creating the motion when it's already there. Um, and if you look at the fact that, you know, when we, go to an action item for the consent agenda, we've got consent agenda and the items listed below that, then we make the motion to approve or deny to accept the consent agenda. So we on one segment do it, in my opinion, appropriately, but on the other ones, we're coming up with the motions before we've even discussed. I mean, and it's, it, any motion is to either approve, deny or table. I mean, that's what we can do with whatever it is we need to talk about. But there have been a few times that because of the way it was worded, you have to go through a whole bunch of processes to not do it the way it's been worded. But haven't we, so this is my opinion, mm -hmm. this is a starting point, haven't we 
in discussion determined that you know we need to amend that and you know because you know based on our discussion we figure out mm -hmm. that maybe the right motion is this and don't haven't we i mean i guess i would speak to chris and have we um, amended the motion as we made it i mean i guess that's well, I what we like have to do is we have to make the motion that's on here, then we have to amend it. So it's it's because, well, and I guess that kind of segues into chairman responsibilities, um, because as a chairman, I all I am to do is lead this meeting and uh, keep the troops together, so to speak. I don't have any other authority that's outside of my responsibility as a trustee that's equal to the remainder so i guess if you intend to give me the authority to make motions then that's one thing but i am not going to assume that i have any authority outside the ability to lead the meeting and you know be accountable to you folks so maybe that's because I do want to discuss that as another thing on here is the fact that um, I'm not going to assume any authority that's outside of my scope as a trustee um, because all, all I'm called to do is as the chairperson is lead the meeting and any other duties that are given to me so none have been given to me so I'm not assuming anything well don't you put the don't you meet I meet with the chair to discuss but to make for agenda, right? super superintendent yes to so to create look? the agenda so your, your changes how would it look i mean would there be uh you know can you go to Conley's uh agenda wasn't that up there what was the one next to it? no i have boise schools up and down lewiston what are those so Rob, or trust me, I the important thing is that we're labeling action and information. So you can see here how Lewiston School District just lists it and they say information um, or action. And this is, uh, this is Blaine County. Um, same thing, they just kind of list the items and then above they label what is action and within. So you just give them the subject Correct. of what we're going to talk about. Correct. That will need no, to have an action on it. And we don't have to have any, we don't have to, we can make any motion that we determine. Correct. Okay, so basically. Any individual board member can just for a minute and then they can never discuss yeah. and vote it yes or no order. Yeah. It does take some. As long as the, the topic is specific correct that's the only thing we talk about yes and then we just come up with our yes and i mean one of the advantages of that is if a specific topic creates two different things that need to be taken action on that can occur if we're talking about something and it's not an emotion it creates a hiccup in the process so i just think that we need to take back the responsibilities as trustees to truly discuss the items and create the motions that's my personal thing and to debbie's uh thoughts i i do think us having a little cheaty fee <laughs> that says this is how you make a motion <laughs> Is great because I mean I still am like okay what do I need to say? I think that's going to be important for us to know. And removing the words approve or deny, yeah, um, puts us more back into actually Robert's rules and more of a parliamentary because there's more than just approve or deny, and I think that's right. been the thing in the past too, is that a motion can be anything. It can be postponed. It can be tabled. It can be debated. It yep. can be amended, it can be approved, denied, you know, what, whatever. So I agree with we need the discussion, but I do hear the same as what they're saying is that some still need a cheat sheet. What's the topic? 
and what are we trying to accomplish? Right. Okay. So that we have direction and right. then right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then so whoever happens to read it online too also knows, you know, like some of them are saying that here's the action items, you know, these mm -hmm. are the things we're going to accept, reject, talk further mm -hmm. at another meeting or what have you, and then um just like they've laid out there, which pretty much yeah. sticks to what we what we do anyway. So like on that act one action item where it says consider doing something, mm -hmm. I think that's great because then they're saying you know, we need to look at this. Do we need to do something or do we not? Consider is the word there. Right. Yes, that's that's a great way of And they have a recommended action uh, for the consideration, which would give you uh, a movement toward your motion. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, I can come up with motions. That's not. No. Okay. Well, you're the most seasoned, so yeah. we're going to lean on you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a problem with another motion, but I, I get it. As long as we have a clear topic that we mm -hmm. stick to, correct. The public knows that's you know we still. I just as long as the um, the agenda it clearly spells out, and then we stick to that. Oh, exactly. You know, it, that saves us a step if we right. want to change the motion and we don't have to right. do this and then amend this and it's mm -hmm. probably easier on, on the clerk. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I'm so we'll work on that for the I'm next. I'm glad to see the, the examples of these in my head and trying to figure out, you know. Right. <laughs> What's this going to look like? Well, and it just kind of hit me tonight. It's like, well, we do do that with the consent agenda because mm -hmm. it's like, here's the consent agenda, and then we can talk about it and we can decide what we're going to do with it, and then we make the motion. So, okay. And then um, it was brought up at the last board meeting that we should consider doing something about, um, oh, wait, no, I'm going back up to the chairman responsibilities um <laughs> i have received an email i did respond to the email the email was very um generous and kind towards uh, one of our staff members and or one of our administration so um what i would think is appropriate is i'd like to read it to you guys what the person wrote and how i responded mm -hmm. um Chrissy, is that acceptable? Okay. So the uh, email came from um, a Mrs. Betty J. Owen. Uh, she's one of our guest teachers. Uh, she stated, um, my name is Betty J. Owen and I'm a former out of state retired teacher. I have been substitute teaching in the district since 2017. I enjoy working in your district elementary, junior and senior high schools and interacting with the high caliber of staff that you have employed in your school district. As a guest teacher, I have interfaced with your school's office personnel, teachers, assistants, administrative, custodial, as well as the district resource officers. I have observed all of your staff demonstrate helpfulness, respect, support, and friendliness to parents, volunteers, and outside individuals like myself. I would like to state that it is a privilege and pleasure to work in all of your schools. Our principal, excuse me, one principal I would like to mention at this time because I'm very impressed with his work is Harrison Birch. Did I say that correctly? Birch. Birch, vice principal of Lakeland Junior High School. When I am a guest teacher at his school, he makes it a point to offer his assistance if I need anything. I see him greeting the students by name in the morning as they enter the school, and I observe him monitoring halls as well as interacting with students throughout the day. I have noticed him being respectful to his student body and vice versa. I spoke with a student from one of the classes I recently subbed in, and she felt he was a great principal who watched over the school, inside during class time and outside during lunch break. She said he is strict, but listens to the students and is very understanding. She repeated that Mr. Birch is a good principal. My purpose in mentioning this is because I know you have a Golden Apple Teacher Recognition Program 
but I don't know if you have such a program for principals. If you do not have a program that recognizes principals, I would encourage you to consider Mr. Birch for such an award. Thank you again for allowing me to work in your district. Sincerely, Betty J. Owen. Oh, nice. That was wonderful. Yeah. So my response to her was, Dear Ms. Owen, thank you for your email and being an honored representative of our district. Our district would fail into peril without the service and commitment of our guest teachers. You are one of our most valuable assets. I appreciate your kind words and praises for Mr. Birch. His commitment and dedication to our student, staff, and district are worthy of recognition. I will share your email and suggestions with the other board members. I am not clear on whether we have a program that recognizes the tireless devotion principals, administrative staff, and all the other committed individuals provide to create the incredible district we have, but I will find out. Again, thank you for the accolades for Mr. Birch and for reaching out to us. There we go. So on that note, do we have anything? <laughs> yes, we do. We, have we do. Okay. Classified and certified uh, of the year program. Okay. And it was a big awards ceremony. They actually didn't have it, I think, last year. Um, the sex is in charge of it. And okay. She does a really good job. She's been in charge of it for years before I even got here. So okay. I'll let her speak to it. <laughs> um, we have it as that funnels up to the state. So, so our teachers of the year award each year to one teacher of the year to represent the district at that state level. Okay. But we don't have anything that recognizes uh, our principals. Okay. So, so if that's something that okay. the board wants to entertain, I'm certainly happy to work with you to put something in place to do that mm -hmm. at our end of the year um, celebration. Well, I know at the last meeting, um, Trustee Grissom mentioned creating something that honors members of the district. And so I think that kind of, to me, when that came in, I thought, oh, here would have been a great opportunity because someone's, you know, right. rising above what we see on a daily basis. So how do we want to go about, do we want to include um, the layout sort of of that sort of program or program seems like such a formal word but you know when you've got the employee of the week or the month or the dis you know whatever we want to do but do we want to throw that in with the workshop we're having next week or how do we want to approach that any ideas yeah we, go ahead i would say we definitely i think would need a, a workshop or include it in the workshop um i think it is part of the vision and mission of this board uh, to come up with something with that. So yeah, maybe we can talk about it at the workshop mm -hmm. and what that looks like and what's criteria and how do we find these people or, you know, obviously you know, probably just start emailing us about them. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I just, I wanted you folks to know this came in yeah. and what my response was to her. So yeah, that's awesome. That that's is. great. Especially for somebody from the outside to come in and with so many years experience and you know really recognize that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's and amazing. she's yeah. I'm just excited that we have her and so many in the pool because they're I know they're desperately needed. Well let's kind of touch on that in our next in our next workshop. Okay. Sounds great. And then the last thing was uh, board member technology equipment for discussion. Um, I, for one, I, really don't like this. I don't like this. I don't say that too loud. It's too small. I have um, vision issues. I had a macular hole. I mean, it's just looking through my eyes is quite fun. And the smaller the screen, the worse and the harder it is for me. Now, I would like to see us, especially with some of the things we I help with like on the policy committee um, to have like a normal laptop computer. Um, I think that you do a lot of stuff with the committees and things like that and I don't, so I'm okay just keeping this a small one, but I certainly do see the need for people who are more active than I am. Have older <laughs> eyes. <laughs> well, well and you do have a lot, you and, and Trustee Grissom do 
a lot of, you know, with all of that, the yes. policy changes and all that, that I don't do. You know, I, I use this, you know, to check my email and bring to board meetings and things like that. But you guys use them a whole lot and it's hard to type. It is. If I had to use it as much as you, I would be you know, feeling the same way. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, I would support, you know, you guys upgrading. I, 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 I love the size of it. What? I like it close to me and all that. Rude. <laughs> hey, I'm 50. I don't have that guy. <laughs> okay. Chairman Thompson, I'm yeah. happy to get whatever people want. And we can get okay. whatever people want. Um, okay. If you could just let me know. Just uh, to put it into context. And, you know, this. Uh, Irons. <laughs> I was going to say Chairman Iron, Vice Chair Brian Dunn, he was a friend. So um, he was on the board when there were still paper agendas, and I'm like, push, 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 until I was like, we cannot, we do not need to so Yeah, and so, <laughs> so we we really did like sort of do a little push that I was like, we're not going to have paper, it took me a year to get this to happen. Um, and then we got to these and then showing what students were using. So I think it is good that you guys felt like if, if students use them a lot, a lot of parents will buy them their own device because they are a little bit clunky, but some of the kids hold it like a book and they use it just to touch screen. So, um, but we are happy to purchase whatever if any of the board, you, you could just email me a link to what you want. I will get it ordered for you ASAP. Okay. We started on. I started on the iPad, so this is an upgrade. Yeah. It would be all right if it translated, but it's so proprietary that it translates to nothing but Google. So <laughs> anything in your brain, yeah. of muscle memory of shortcut keys or what have you, I'm constantly losing things and highlighting things. And I'm like, oh, I forgot that doesn't happen on this keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> You're, since you don't get paid and you volunteer a lot of time, we're happy to purchase whatever laptops, whatever technology yeah. you need to be. But I have used it for over a year, not Saturday. <laughs> when I saw your last email, I'm like, I really want this to be on the agenda. Well, so you need to take care of this. The 2,000 page preamble yes. that I went, I read the first 600 and some odd pages of it, oh. and I lost it three times in the row to something. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah. And that's when the frustration was yeah. like, yeah. Just if you could just email to me whoever okay. wants, then just I will take care of it. Okay. Um, when would you like us to get that information to you? In the next couple of days. Would okay. Be great. If you just then we won't lose sight of it, and I'll put it in and do a budget deal request and okay. Take it out of my budget and you're good to go. All right. So I believe that's it for the discussion items. I did me. Um, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, never mind. Now we're going to move on to the action items uh, to where we can take action to approve, deny, amend, modify, or postpone any action, postpone action on any of the items listed below. Uh, the first item of business is. Uh, to approve or deny to amend the board meeting agenda to add items L and M to enter into executive session per Idaho Code 74206-1B. Um, so we do need to, uh, we, we need to enter back into executive session to address um, some personnel business but it is not on the agenda to do so. So I would need a motion to do that if um, we are in agreement to amend the agenda. And are we amending to leave it in the order in which it is, or are we amending and moving directly into an executive session? No, we would no. be amending okay. and going into executive session when, at the end. Okay, great. Well, I'll move that we amend the agenda to add uh, items to L and M to enter into an executive session for Idaho Code 74 2061B. I'll okay, hearing a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, 
we need to either approve or deny to update the LJSD 272 fall reopen plan. I'll uh, move to approve the update to the uh, fall reopen plan as presented. I'll second that. Hearing a motion and second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next, we need to approve or deny to appoint Chelsea personally as clerk of the Board of Trustees. I'll make a motion to approve the appointing of Chelsea personally as the clerk of the Board of Trustees. I'll second that motion. Having a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, we need to approve or deny the administration's recommendation of Chelsea Persley as district custodian of public records. Is there any? Approve the administration's recommendation of Chelsea Persley as district custodian of public records. I'll second that. Having a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next, we need to approve or, deny, approve or deny the administration's recommendation of Chrissy Williams as acting clerk of the Board of Trustees in the absence of clerk of the board. I'll move to approve the uh, recommendation of the administration for Chrissy Williams as acting clerk of the board in the absence of clerk of the board. Motion. Having a motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Um, we now have uh, to approve or deny the updates to policy 5740 reduction in force. Would we like to have any discussion on the uh, revised reduction in force? policy or the updated uh, reduction in force policy. This uh, policy was presented to uh, the district's legal counsel who did make recommendations for changes. So Chairman Council, if I could just we had just to put it in context we had the rift policy was years and years outdated there was some work done before i got here then we started some work on the shore of the board we decided there were some updates needed we met again with the association came up with some new protocol um, and then we had had feedback from the board that the procedure piece should be pulled out of the policy put into a procedure hence we had the p Mm -hmm. And then we had a version that went to the board. And so we've had like three or four first readings, hence why it's on the second reading. And then we had the district attorney read through it. And we took all of her recommendations, um, except for one clarification we had um, with the certified staff saying it's category, the three groups that get pulled are the category A, I mean, the category two. I looked at the A and my A came out of my mouth, category twos. Category threes, and then all other employees that have scored an overall basis. So those are the three groups. We just did a little bit of better clarifying of that um, right here, but uh, she's approved all these changes. So we're um, good to go. And you can see we've highlighted in green and then struck out, struck the other things coming out. This is uh, Ms. Sexton put in exactly what's from state Idaho coding. Perfect. Um, we wanted it to be real clear. And then down here, the one thing that we did, she may have had the decision whether that it would go, if there was an appeal on whether this had been scored appropriately, were um, to go to either the superintendent or board or not, getting that to the board. <laughs> so that's what that last one she said to do. Um, and mainly because I'm sitting in this committee ahead. Mm -hmm. If there's an appeal, it would go just to the decision the board would do. Um, and if we want to change seven calendar days, we want it to be a pretty quick turnaround because having lived this through this before, um, you you really don't have a lot of time if we want to turn in a, an appeal of this whole rubric and they don't agree with it. 
we, we did employees will have seven calendar days from the original notification date and submitted to the Open Board of Trustees. Um, one thing that I recall reading on the modifications, item seven that got stricken, um, I believe it was um, the attorney's recommendation to move that to the actual policy because this is procedure. I, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she thinks it needs to just be something that we do and it's not supposed to be a policy, but I can certainly read that and ask her. We don't have the policy, so I'll have to bring it back to you next meeting if that is in fact what she wanted us to do. Okay. Um, the only the only thing that I, I took out of what, the way I interpreted what she was stating is, it is wise to let your special, especially the certified employees know they're responsible for reviewing their personal personnel files to make sure everything is correct and up to date. So when that's put in the policy that we recommended that you do that, then in a sense, they've been given the notice that you need to do this. And it is so their responsibility. I'll follow up because that makes a lot of sense. Okay. I, I'll reread her thing and then if it's supposed to go there, we'll bring that, we'll just bring that back to the board. Next week. Okay. Um, I think there's also another personnel uh, yeah. file policy that is okay. also appropriate. Okay. It would be placed. And also, the HR director is going to do it on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. And she put it into account like before school starts, it's going to be an annual reminder. Okay. Um, Oh, and I do believe, maybe not, um, because we don't, uh, the a RIF policy for classified employees, we're going to look into that. Yeah, so we have okay. that on our to-do list that we're going to do some research. Um, we haven't ever had that in any mm -hmm. district I've been in, but it certainly made sense after she said that. So we're going to see if ISBA has a model policy and then um, we'll come forward with that to the policy committee. Okay. For the, for, I guess going through the policy committee or if it's already an ISB model policy, should I just put it on the agenda for review? Um, I would think, it, well, because you had mentioned getting a CID, CDI. CDI team uh, yeah, together. Okay. Yes, getting their input. So I think if um, there was input provided to the policy team to make sure that the policy met and then it came to the board, I think that would be the appropriate action. Yeah, I think it would be would helpful be if a few member representatives from the CDI team could meet with the policy committee. Mm -hmm. I think that would be- That'd um, be great. Yeah, I think that'd be really good for them. Yeah. Okay. So that, I just wanted to give you kind of a little bit of background and not answer any questions that people have before we vote. Mm, thank you. Does anybody have any other questions, thoughts, inputs? No. Okay. So that being said, would someone like to make a motion to approve or deny the update to policy 5740 reduction in force. For the procedure and the policy, or are we? For the procedure and the policy. Okay, I'll, I'll move to approve the update to policy 5740 for the reduction in force and it is presented. I'll second that. Having a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, the next action is to approve or deny policy 3285, sexual harassment, discrimination, and retaliation, Title IX. Um, it's open for discussion. Um, I think we, I know we keep bringing this back and forth, but with everything that I shared with everybody, the training and the documentation, and we have some more to sit through. Um, we need to change who some of this team is. And I think it would be uh, behoove us to uh, understand a little bit more the district and staff and the board 
um, the changes to uh, Title IX. Okay. Um, I don't think, um, based upon training and input I got from the trainers um, of Title IX, who are also legal counsel themselves, that um, the district, uh, the clerk of the board should not be the coordinator because Title IX really lives and breathes within the district. And the clerk of the board is the one who, number one, decides whether a formal complaint will or won't be made. Um, and they're also the keeper of, we'll say, the process from the beginning to the end. So they will, they're the, the uh, clerk or the coordinator, I'm sorry, really is the one who takes care of the whole process to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Um, and it was a recommendation and I did attach to the one, uh, I sent Chrissy all the updated information um, and their suggestion, and of course we can go through this, the, the trainers who are also uh, legal counsel themselves, um, they prefer and thought it was better, number one, that the board should have nothing to do with the process other than appeals, that's it. Um, that uh, the coordinator should be somebody that is at, they call it central office or district office. Um, and then from there, uh, you know, assistant principals possibly, or the principal as investigators, you know, and they, none of this is written in stone. This is just how, what they typically do. And then they went down the line. Um, obviously the uh, decision maker being um, somebody again who's a high level position or the district office. And I think a lot of those people we've already named quite well in those roles. We have Dr. Meyer and all that. And I, I believe also when we get into assigning deputy, you know, from a policy perspective and Title IX, when we get into assigning uh, deputy coordinators, which are fine to have, and we should have at least one deputy coordinator along with the coordinator, because for instance, if we put hypothetically, um, Either way, if we put uh, Brooke as uh, the Title IX coordinator and Ms. Sexton as a deputy or vice versa, if it's an employee issue, obviously the HR person um, would step away from the investigation because her job would be, she deals with the employees day in and day out, right? So there could be um, some conflict of interest there and some other things. So. Um, I think we need to maybe bring just this policy uh, back to the policy committee so we can get a little bit better understanding. Uh, Title IX has really, really changed. It's almost like a brand new beast. Um, and I just wanna make sure that we, we get it right. I think in the meantime that we can establish a web page. I think a lot of that's already done in the procedure and the, and the policy that we could take that information right. and at least create the web page that says, hey, here's <coughs> how you can do it. The um, low chart pieces. Uh, well, this we have to name who, how, you know, who's in charge of what, how do they report, all pretty much everything that was already laid out in the policy with maybe interchanging some names. Okay. Um, and then there's some more training I was gonna set through. The other thing is, is it's just a whole nother discussion. Yeah. Every employee is supposed to be trained because the defin or, or trained because the definition under Title IX of the responsible party or responsible employee now expands to everybody. Um, even though there are people in these roles that are in charge of following the procedure, it's almost like everybody plays a piece, and there's there's just a lot of responsibility, and we want to make sure that the district's covered in how we um, apply it. So I would like to bring the Title IX piece back um, okay. along with whatever else I've learned and whoever else might want to join us. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll try and keep sharing. We are, the district does have uh, the training through the state. Um, some of it's free, some of it's like $60 a class. And then I really enjoyed and I learned about these guys from ISPA to the state to training is uh, ICS. They've been really good and very open communication through email and um, I, I've been very grateful, thankful for them. And for speakers, um, HR Director Cunningham is still in the middle. She has been going and taking 
Title IX. So she has been continuing that. She's still uh, not completed with that. So I think she'll be happy that we're waiting on this piece of it. Yeah. So okay. Credited, she might be credited to the next one. Yeah. 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 Good. Um, so that would be my recommendation to the board is to bring the uh, policy 3285 uh, back to the policy committee by itself. Um, let's thoroughly go over it and make sure that we have all the team players in the roles um, named. Okay. And then uh, bring the policy back and, and accept, accept it that. Okay. At that time. Thank um, you for paying attention to all this and the level of detail you're going into. Yeah. Well, and I became, as I sat through the training, um, just for my own knowledge, even as a trustee, I really don't participate except for in the appellate level, but I, I thought it prudent to protect the district and make sure that we're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. that I even paid for training oh. for myself <laughs> to attend these four weeks in a row because um, there's just a lot of things that have changed and, and everybody, there was over 500 participants in the meeting wow. today and they are in review and they're all, you know, veterans of the thing and even they're asking questions mm -hmm. and well, what about this? No, not that. And um, That's amazing. Yeah. You're incredible. So, You're awesome. Yes. Cheryl Dawson. Number one is we, you volunteer. I want to reiterate again. Um, we have a budget for professional development that we will pay for that. So if you have a, oh. you shouldn't be paying, the board okay. should not be paying for things out of your yeah. pocket because again, you're volunteering your time and we will pay for that. So if you could give me an invoice okay. for that, please. Um, I appreciate everything you've done, uh, especially since you have an interest in it and you're good at it. The other thing I want to keep in mind, um, and I do follow through with Chrissy and Chelsea, is we have some dialogue, we have some things as a district we must do annually with the staff. So side aware, awareness, we do our QPR every three years, we have bullying and harassment by mm -hmm. law, we have the code of ethics. So this title nine will fit right in. Yeah. Um, and I'm simply telling you that because I want to make sure that we have it all, instead of being in like these four different policy, it would be nice to say annually, we will do remind employees about these things. Perfect. Um, so I just want to write, we're writing that down because I think that'd be helpful for the employees as well, but that will fit right into mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that, that is exactly what they brought up too, is one way to remind you with your, you know, the mandatory reporting training you have to do and all, and just sort of meld it all in there together. And I know that the state, and you probably know more, um, Mr. Sandbaker <coughs> and Mr. Fox down there, they're a community member with this uh, ICS. Mm -hmm. So being a community member, there's a lot of availability for no cost to the district too, so. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Chrissy, where are we at on just even getting a, a taser page up on our website? Is it? Okay, perfect. Yeah, if you click on the uh, district tab, it'll be there. Okay. So my... Uh, so should we just make a motion to table this? Yeah, we'll make a motion to table it until... Uh, we have an opportunity to revisit it in the yeah. policy. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll bring it back. So I'm making a motion. I think I'll disable policy 3285 so we'll ask for discrimination and retaliation. Yeah. Until we can revisit it and then um, policy. Yeah. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Having a motion and a second, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, the motion carries. All right, so we. Um, earlier had discussion on adjusting the board meeting times. Um, so, and I believe the consensus was that we would start the actual meeting at five, moving the executive session to prior to the start of the board meeting. So we have a, um, we need to make a motion to approve or deny board meeting start time modification for the calendar year 2021. Um, for the fact that we did approve the start times at last board meeting um, for six o'clock. Go ahead. No. Chit chat. Motion. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so we'll yes, please. Uh, move to approve the board meeting start time modification for the coming year 2021 to reflect at five o'clock start time. Okay. So I'll second that. Oh. Before we finalize, I think you say beginning with the February and then say the exact date since we're, we're actually already going to. Oh, okay. I just think for the public, if they're just watching this later, no that reason. would be for February 11th, 14th. Okay. So we need to approve the board meeting start time modification for the calendar year 2021, starting February 11th meeting to start the regular scheduled board meeting at 5 o'clock mm -hmm. p.m. with executive sessions being held at 4 o'clock. Okay. All right, having a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, we now have uh, to approve or deny the alternate authorization for employee 01.28.2021A. There is an attachment. Um, would we like to have any discussion on this? I know in the in the attachment it states that the district has had some um, discussion with the state regarding this because my uh, question is um, of all you know most most uh, alternate authorizations are fine except for when it comes to uh, special ed so. Um, I guess that was my question as to, you know, whether it's an idea um, regulation or the state. If it's actually with regarding IC, that's the upload and how we get funded. Uh -huh. um, so uh, initially we thought that it could go around the interim and then onto uh, SWB director, but the way they've done it and particularly we've spent a lot of time with them in certifications that alternate route knowing that she's going to be done. She's already in the mentor program. She's already almost done with her program. She's doing her hours now that she would be ready to get full funding for her in that position this year. Mm -hmm. So this was their recommendation. Based on that, it's really a funding issue. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, so did we ever run an ad? an opening for that position or? No, because it's an interim. So how we've done interim okay. positions in the past is somebody's in there at, um, as an interim, they're qualified to make a determination that it's a immediate need for sure to be filled. We've done it, I think it done three more. In the last five years have been three times. So it's not like it happens a lot, um, but all three have been leadership positions. And um, otherwise, teaching positions that we've had, mm -hmm. they have been, instead of being an interim position, they have been an uh, alternate route or to fill positions, sometimes long-term as teachers stay in a position that they can't get it filled. But in at least three admin positions, um, and it, the, they, in fact, she's coming next board meeting uh, midway through the year so that the board can check in, ask how it's going, talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, the board is involved in the looking to making sure the evaluation is good and the person is suitable. And then if they are, then they are continued in the position if not, and you know, the board desires to open it up, then they can open it up and take applicants and that you know, person to be free to apply. So far in the prior two, the people have been absolutely phenomenal and the board they've come into exact session before the talk to them and the board and the staff are definitely not familiar with people staying in this prior to 
So this is just an, this is just a, sort of a, a jog from the interim that we're already doing anyways because we're like in the middle of the year now and all that kind of yeah, stuff. In right? fact, um, can we get um, HR Director Cunningham on because she's on the front. I don't want to speak for her. Okay. But I do know this is a funding issue. It's not a certification issue. Okay. It's a funding issue is what she said. Okay. And so I think that's why this is the part. But I'd rather have her... Sure. And so I go on microphone. Brooke, can you hear us? I can. Um, yeah, this is definitely a funding issue. Um, it was just trying to find a category uh, to place her. This is this is what she's doing. Is mostly. I mean, it it is um, special education, and so. Um, in order for us to get that funding and she's in a program we just we had to do this all off or else we weren't going to get funding for her mm -hmm. okay i mean i don't i don't necessarily have i guess i'm confused because the federal regulation and the state regulation i mean in, the, in big bold that it explicitly says alternate routes can be used except for this anything to do with special ed well, and, and that, nope, that's, that's not entirely accurate. Okay. So, um, as long as she's, she is in a program, she okay. can do that. She is in the program to become a special ed director. Okay. So we're able to use that all off in this, in this, um, instance and the state highly recommended that we did that. Oh, okay. So we did, so the state is aware of what we're doing in and there, this was their recommendation to do it. We have that documented. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. In emails. Um, I have CC'd several of our administrators in the district on this. Okay. So Brooke, are we receiving funds for her through the state for her position or are we receiving funding for her through her position as an intern? It would be for this position. And so. Um, what position? As an SWD director. So that's why we have to have the all off though. Otherwise we wouldn't receive funds for her at all. Okay. It, it's part of the salary based apportionment. Okay. Um, formula. Okay. So we put her in this position without knowing how we were going to be paid for her? She does have an administrator, uh, an administrator endorsement, and she also has, um, it is, what is the, what is that? Yeah. Other? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so Sorry, bro, go ahead. And so anyways, um, under the administrator endorsement, um, she would have been able to take on anything that had to do with federal programs. Okay. However, we did identify her. She, as an interim special ed director, she's been corresponding as the interim special ed director. She okay. is in the program. So in, in, in order to, you know, just be on the up and up on what she's doing, mm -hmm. this was the best route to go. Okay. Just to clarify, because I don't want you to think that Brooke did not have all of her ducks in a row, is when we went to the beginning, I don't, I, know, I think everyone remembers it happened quite quickly, right, right, right did. before school started, mm -hmm. and this is, if any districts get in legal trouble, this is where you get in legal trouble right. with IDEA. So it's very important we have somebody that really understands the laws and compliance and such. Mm -hmm. She was the only person in the entire district that ha is had working on this credential. Um, not to say there wouldn't have been somebody else in sure. the country, but at that late date. Um, but Brooke did look, and with it, the principal K-12 endorsement, mm -hmm. really they had told her that would count. Okay. But then when she went through the IC, which is the salary grade, that's how we get funded through the IC and Chad. Okay. And, and, and Sheila Cove, who's in the SWB, helps Chad, and they have to your, there. It's very particular, right. and they got that. That came back as an error, and Brooke had to do some follow up. Then she found out, okay, no, we won't because she's in this program and she's labeled as an interim. So this is just to get funding in the SBA salary based apportionment. Okay. That's that funding. There's the discretionary fund pieces we talked about tonight. Right. 
then the other piece Brian talks about is salary based portion. Okay. So it really is not any sort of way to like we're not trying to give anybody anything they don't deserve. We just really need the funding for a position that we thought we were Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And I don't have any problem with that. I just when I looked at it and I knew from some other stuff I was reading, this stuck out of my head because it says that they have not had certification or licensure requirements waived on an emergency, temporary, or provisional basis, and, and then it gives some other things. And then right on the front of the, the uh, Department of Education, the State's Department of Education, in the big red rectangle, it says, important, emergency provisional, bold letters, cannot be used for special education per right, idea. This, and this is, so not, I just, this is not an emergency provisional. Okay. This is alter, alternate authorization, which okay. is different than emergency provisional. Okay. okay. All right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we're all... I know, think we've only brought you one emergency provisional. Am I wrong, Brooke? One emergency yeah. provisional. We rarely do that. Yeah. And I don't think anybody, I just want to need to understand it for my own self that yes. we're, you know, that's it. Okay, I'm good. I'm fine with that. And this is, uh, yeah, I mean, I know she's been functioning in the role. We're almost done with school, so. Well, we're just going to have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> no. I mean, there is a start panicking. Well, the days are getting longer, right? They're getting more sunshine. I'm like, yes, summer's coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I will uh, move to approve the alternate authorization for employee 01282020-8. Hearing a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. That concludes the regular, oh no, wait, wait. That includes the regular thingy. Oh, do we have board member input for future agenda items? Maybe. Oh, I was writing down down about the workshops and what's going to be in the workshops. Anybody have any thoughts or suggestions for input for future agendas? Not today. Not today. Okay. Moving on. Uh, we need to. Um, we can take action to approve, deny, amend, modify, or postpone action items. Action on any of the items listed below. Uh, we need to approve or deny to enter into executive session for Idaho Code 74201, excuse me, 74206-1B. No decisions, actions will be made during executive session. This is only a motion to enter into executive session. I'll make a motion to enter into executive session for Idaho Code 74206-1B. I'll second that. Hearing a motion and a second. All in favor, we need to do a roll call vote. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Okay. Do I have to gavel all the things? So I will stop the recording.